In this video, I'm going to be building a helmet of the main character in the classic Nintendo game Metroid Prime. In previous videos, I experimented with using UV resin and baby powder to cover layer lines on prints. And in this build, I'll use the process in a real use case. I'll take you through all the steps of printing and processing the helmet to a glossy finish, but this will take some time. So I apologize in advance for the length of the video. I broke the build down into four chapters, resin and sanding, painting, the resin visor, and then the interior and electronics. Also, I want to thank PCB Way for sponsoring the video, but I'll talk about them more later. The helmet was too big to fit the build plate, so it needed to be cut up into four pieces. First step is to glue all the parts together. If you like these builds, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps the channel grow and lets me make more videos. I didn't trust the helmet to hold together over time with just CA glue on the thin edges, so I added reinforcements with a layer of mesh and resin on the inside. I'm going to need a stand to display and work on the helmet, so this is a good time to cut something out with the laser. The gloop is pretty good, but there are a few trouble spots, but that can be fixed with some sanding and resin. The printing issue on the front grille needs to be addressed next. The backing piece will get glued on and then the joints will be smoothed out later. Now it's time to mix up some resin and baby powder. On 
me know in the comments below what kind of project you would use this process on. I'll start by adding resin just to the seams to fill in the cracks and build up the uneven areas. Once all the areas are covered, it's into the curing chamber for a bit to make sure everything is hardened. With curing done, the resin gets a quick wipe down with isopropyl alcohol to remove any residue, then sanding with 120 grit paper. Most of the seams are level now. But the worst areas still have some gaps, and they'll need another coat of resin. All the seams look good now. Just need to clean up a few spots in the grooves with the Dremel where resin has gotten into. Now it's time to give the whole helmet a coat of resin. Before moving on with the build, I'd like to take a moment to mention today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay makes prototyping circuit boards easy with their quick turnaround times, low prices, and assembly services. Simply upload your file and get an instant quote on your project. PCBWay also offers CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabricating, and injection molding services. So if you don't own a 3D printer, or you want to print or machine objects out of materials that you can't fabricate at home. PCBWay makes it easy for you to get custom parts for your projects. Check out the link in the description to get started. Now let's get back to the build. Everything is looking pretty good, all the layer lines have been filled in, and now the real sanding starts. The helmet is pretty smooth now, except for a few spots that had really bad layer lines and didn't get a thick enough coat of resin. So I just need to touch those up and then we're done with the resin. In 
previous videos using UV resin, people asked why not just use two-part resin or Bondo. This section of the video was shot a few days after the initial resin application, and this is still the same batch of uh, resin and powder. Before heading to paint, the helmet gets a wash to make sure all the dust has been removed. Once the primer is dry, I'll go over the helmet and mark any remaining defects. Fixing the remaining flaws will depend on what the issue is. Some spots have divots and need to be filled in, for that I'm using black CA glue. Other spots will just need more sanding. With the specific areas addressed, the whole helmet gets sanded to remove any high spots, then another coat of primer. Now the helmet gets a light sanding with 220 grit paper. There's still a small issue on the seams on the left and right side of the helmet, uh, so I'll address that with some glazing putty. Now a final coat of primer.
Before moving on to paint, I need to address the chin grill. The gaps were too difficult to fix, so I printed a replacement out of resin. That means I need to cut the old one out before I can glue the new one in. While I was printing the chin grill, I also printed the side tubes. They'll get glued in later. With the grill cut out, the helmet gets a quick wet sanding with 400 grit paper before paint. But before painting, we'll make the visor by printing it out of green transparent resin. The visor turned out pretty nice right off the machine, but after cleaning and curing, it has a frosted look to it. Also, the supports left some marks on the back, so they'll need to be sanded down and apply a flood coat to uh, fill in the voids. I'm pretty surprised how clear the visor was after the flood coats. The slight thickness variations distort the view, making it look like old, antique wavy glass. This is my enclosure for my long mill CNC that also doubles as an enclosure for my Xtool D1 laser. It already has air extraction set up, so it'll make a good candidate for a paint booth. 
I went to Home Depot and got a cheap furnace filter and then used some cardboard and tape to create an enclosure behind it and then connected that to a flex hose and to the air vent. Then just added some paper to protect from any overspray and it was time to paint. Once the paint was dry, the helmet gets a coat of clear to seal it before moving on to the next step. All the lines in the helmet need to be painted black. This will be done with a brush and why the helmet needs to be clear coated first. This way if there's any accidents, the paint will just wipe off before it dries. paint done, the front grill and the tubes can get glued on. To complete the painting of the helmet, it gets two more coats of clear. Once the first coat dries, I wipe it down with a paper towel to buff it and remove any dust that may have stuck while drying. And then it's time to glue the visor in. Now normally this is where I would have stopped, but since Overkill is underrated, I wanted to see if I could print the character's face and put it behind the visor. So I found a model of Samus online and cut it up to have the part of the face I needed to put in the helmet, and then I printed it in resin. Since the model is already smooth right off the machine, I'm just using a normal white primer before painting.
had to find some way to hold the face in the helmet, so I used some packing foam I had laying around. I wasn't sure how this was going to look, so I wanted to make sure it was removable in case it didn't work out. So I didn't want to glue it into the helmet. So I ended up making it press fit with a small piece of velcro to hold it in place. Next the face needed to light up, so I added some LEDs. I had these 3 volt white LEDs from some other project that should work. To mount them I'm using some steel strapping which will also act as a heatsink. Each LED gets a bit of thermal paste on the back and CA glue on the sides to hold it to the metal strip. Even though the visor is green, it didn't have the proper green glow to it, so I decided to add some green filters to the LEDs. One LED set is glued to each side of the face and a larger one is at the center facing down. Since these LEDs are 3 volts and I'm using a 12 volt power supply, I'm using a buck converter that will allow me to control the voltage. Now let's put it all together and tape the power lead to the helmet so it comes out the back. So here on camera, it looks pretty good, but in person, I don't like it. Because of the distortion effect from the visor, from certain angles, the face just looks off. So I decided to take it out and glue the lights directly into the helmet and add a black background. So that way when the lights are off, the visor is just black, and then when you turn the lights on, you get a green glow.
So tell me in the comments, what do you think looks better, face or no face? That's how you print the helmet from start to finish. Well, at least how I do it. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. If you aren't trying to get a glossy finish, it's way easier. If you watched this far, you're awesome, and thanks for sticking around. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. It really helps the channel grow. And if you're sticking around this long, you must like it, right? Thanks again, and stay tuned for my next project.